I want to talk about my favorite animal. Well, not really. The mole. Wait, no, not that mole. This mole. Yeah, that one. Or an easier number to look at, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is what the definition of a mole is. A mole is a counting number of items or objects or things. I would define a mole just like a dozen. So a dozen is 12 items, 12 particles, 12 objects. And a mole, which we can abbreviate M-O-L, save all that time writing the E, uh, is this many items or particles or objects. It's literally a counting number of things and a very large number of them. So where did this come from? Look at iron and look at the atomic mass. It is 55.845 AMUs, or sometimes it's designated as just a U, which will be the AMUs. An AMU is an atomic mass unit or a unit of mass that measures very, very, very small masses, such as at the atomic level. It is defined by 1 12th of carbon 12. But if we're looking at iron and you had one iron atom, at least on average, it would weigh 55.845 AMUs. If you had two of them, it would weigh 111 plus AMUs. If you had 10 of them, it would weigh 558. But if you had any number of iron atoms that could, you could weigh on a scale, the numbers would be astronomical in terms of how large the AMU is. So in terms of measuring a sample that we can see in a lab, an AMU is not a good unit. So what is? Well, the old gram. We use grams all the time. And typically in labs, we use grams because it's this about the size that we'll be using on a scale. So we need to be able to convert AMUs into grams. So in comparison, one AMU equals to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24th grams. If we go the other way, how many AMUs equals to one gram? So this will be dimensional analysis. We're gonna say one gram, and then we have grams on top, then we have grams on the bottom. We have 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24th grams. That equals to 1 AMU. And would you believe the answer is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd AMUs equals to 1 gram. Okay, so that alone is not that awe-inspiring. And forgive me if this is going to be a little messy, but if we had this many, oops, this many times the 55.845 AMUs, and therefore 3.36 times 10 to the 25th AMUs, I, I, don't, I don't know what we'd have. But magically, magically, this number of AMUs would be equal to 55.845 grams without actually doing any math. So we're going to kind of, in our mind, convert this conversion of AMUs equal to a gram into number of particles. So if we had this many iron atoms, then magically we would have 55.845 grams of iron. So it's a way for us to assume a sample size that would be Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and we don't have to do any math whatever number it is that we see on the periodic table we the number of grams that it will equal and since we don't always want to talk about the actual number of particles but maybe relative amounts like twice as much or three times as much we're going to define this number as not a number of AMUs equaling to a gram, but actually a number of particles equals to one dozens taken, gross is taken, so one mole. So one mole equals to this number of particles. 
We don't ever say particles. We'll say this number of atoms, this number of molecules, how many ions, how many formal units when talking about an ionic compound. One mole of any compound or atom or molecule um, could also equal some number of grams added up from the periodic table. This is called formula weight or molar mass, uh, and we've measured in grams per mole. Finally, one mole of any gas at STP will equal to 22.7 liters. Um, STP is a standard temperature and standard pressure. Standard temperature is zero Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin, and standard pressure is 100 kPa. If you increase the temperature, gases will expand and volume gets bigger. If you increase the pressure, it compresses the gas and volume gets smaller. So if we say that a standard number of particles equals to a standard volume, we have to keep the temperature and pressure constant, or it could be all over the place. Now, this is of a gas at STP. Later, we'll be dealing with liters um, in terms of aqueous solutions, which look like water, and this conversion will not count. Finally, I tend to put this into a graphic organizer, as they would say, and I nicknamed this the hub because there's a centerpiece and everything revolves around the centerpiece, which is a mole. All the conversions will have one mole. One mole equals to some number of grams added from the chart. One mole equals to 22.7 liters at a specific temperature and pressure. And one mole of anything will equal to this number of particles. Uh, as we move past this initial part of mole conversion, we have to recognize the hub is referring to one thing, one item, different measurements of the same item, but one item. If we're talking about oxygen gas, then it's liters of oxygen, moles of oxygen, mass of oxygen, and oxygen molecules. If we were talking about uh, ionic compounds like sodium chloride, it'd be mass of sodium chloride, moles of sodium chloride, we wouldn't have liters because it wouldn't turn into a gas at room temperature. And then formula units or particles of sodium chloride. If we're talking about a single element like xenon, then it's grams of xenon, moles of xenon, liters of xenon, and atoms of xenon. If we switch to a different chemical or to part of a compound, then essentially we are going to be off of the hub and may have to do a different conversion. Each line on the hub is a conversion. And so if you're going from outside in, like mass to moles, that's one conversion. Or you're going from inside to out, like moles of gas to volumes of gas, that's one conversion. However, if you're going from outside to outside you can't get there from here you have to go through the center hub which is why it's a hub so if you started with liters of gas then we would start there we would have to convert to moles first and then we could go to mass or we could go to particles in this case this is a two-step conversion in which you go to the moles first that's one conversion and then mass second I a simple problem we're going to go from moles of helium to liters of helium. Since we're going from helium to helium, this is more than likely a hub problem, and it is. So where are we starting? We're starting with moles. And where we're going, we're going to liters. That is one conversion. So start with what you have, which is 0.4 moles of helium. We can abbreviate that mole with just lopping off the E. And you put moles on top and you put moles on bottom. And we're going to have one mole. One mole equals to 22.7 liters of helium. It doesn't matter what number we start with. Uh, these are equal top and bottom. If we started with 8 million moles, we'd still have the same 22.7 on the top equal to the same one mole on the bottom. Answer rounded to 
two sig figs would be 9.1. It would be liters, and it would be helium. So we have all three components there. Let's do another problem. Okay, the question says we want to go from 12 grams of nitrogen. Notice that nitrogen is a diatomic molecule. We have seven of those. Uh, when they're by themselves and uncharged, they exist in pairs. Uh, so nitrogen is one of them, oxygen is one of them. So we have 12 grams of nitrogen to molecules of nitrogen. Well, let's see. Where are we starting off? Looking for grams. Grams would be a mass. So we're starting off right there. And we're going to molecules. Molecules and moles are not the same thing. Notice that molecules has the cules at the end of it which means it's a totally different word. So we're not necessarily going to, at least we're not going to go to moles and stay there. So that's out of the question. Uh, we're not going to liters. Liters and molecules are not the same thing. So when this says how many molecules, we're talking about a counting number of objects and therefore particles. Well, how do you get to particles? Can we go straight across? Nope, we cannot. We have to go to moles first. And then for moles, we go to molecules. So that's two steps. So we'll start off with what we have, which is 12 grams of nitrogen. I said there's two steps here. So we're going to put two conversions here. So the first step is to go from grams of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen. So grams on top, grams on bottom. Going to moles, how many moles? One mole of nitrogen. Moles on top, moles on bottom. Good. Moles on bottom. How many moles on the bottom? One. In this section with the hub, it's always one mole in the conversions. When we get something called stoichiometry, we'll have a different number from a balanced equation. But in this section, always one mole. And how many molecules? Well, let's see. Molecules, molecules of N2. Well, the Molecules would be Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Molecules equals to one mole. What about the mass? Well, nitrogen weighs 14.01 grams per mole. There's two of them, right, it's in two. So it's going to be 28.02. And you get 2.6 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of nitrogen in 12 grams of nitrogen. One final problem, a little practice problem. This one's a little more complicated. We have 125 milliliters of carbon dioxide, which is a gas. We're assuming STP. Uh, and we want to know how many grams of carbon dioxide that would be. The problem is we're starting here with liters. Uh, we don't have liters, so we have to start with milliliters. So we're going to go from milliliters over here to liters first. So that's one step. That's already one step, but we're not even the hub. Then we go from liters to moles. That's a second step. And then we go from moles to mass because it asks for grams. So really in this case, since the units don't match and it's really important to write down units of measurement, we have to make them match. So we have to do an additional step so they, they fit. And liters equals to moles, not milliliters. That's okay, we can easily convert. Let's start off with what we have, which is 125 milliliters of CO2. And then milliliters on the bottom, liters on the top. One with the prefix 10 to the minus three. Now we have liters of carbon dioxide on top, liters of carbon dioxide on the bottom. Going to moles of carbon dioxide. Then we go moles of carbon dioxide on top, moles of carbon dioxide on the bottom, going to grams of carbon dioxide. Carbon weighs 12.01, oxygen weighs 16.00, not oxygen weighs 16.00. That's how I got the 44.01 number. The math, you get 0.242 grams of carbon dioxide because of sig figs. Milliliters cancel, liters cancel. Moles cancel, leaving you grams of carbon dioxide. And that is uh, the last example for mole conversion. Hope you enjoyed it. See you tomorrow.